Hey everybody, this is Johnny here uh, with Team Legit. Uh, I wanted to show you my uh, Mini Skywalker FPV build. Now, I don't know if they designed the Mini Skywalker to be a uh, FPV platform, but I know the larger one is very successful. Um, with the uh, space constraints here in Los Angeles, I wanted to try to find something small that would work and uh, I could, I could uh, fly around in small parks and things like that. Now, uh, let me show you a little bit about my setup. I'm running the uh, Spectrum AR8000, which is uh, a little bit overkill, but I know I've gone over a mile with this setup. So uh, I know I should have a solid lock for at least a mile. Um, I'm going to be running the Immersion 600 milliwatt uh, 5.8 gigahertz transmitter. So I know these two match up pretty good together. Uh, I wanted to show you that uh, the, the cab in this um, in this uh, Mini Skywalker is very small, but uh, I was able to fit a Cyclops Storm OSD. I've had really, really good luck with these Storm OSDs. I know a lot of guys uh, have issues with their um, GPS freezing and things like that. I personally have never had an issue with it. And uh, as you can see, this is the version 1.1 board. Um, that means the little uh, um, diode on the bottom sticks out. The newer boards are a lot flat. Uh, a lot more flat and I think they come with new sensors or whatever but I've had this OSD since it came out and I've never had any issues with it. Um, I'm running the Turnigy Plush 12 amp ESC to run my 2200 KV <coughs> brushless outrunner motor um, and I, I did an amp draw with the uh, setup and the uh, 5x3 prop and I was running I was pulling close to 6 amps, which is uh, pretty efficient, and it had pretty sufficient amount of thrust. Now, I don't know how much power I'm going to have with this uh, platform, but uh, definitely will be uh, a challenge. Um, with the uh, two halves closed together, I was able to fit a uh, 1000 milliamp LiPo, 3S LiPo, clearly uh, and, and comfortably, but uh, a 1300 may squeeze in there with a little bit of shaving. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close up the uh, two halves together and show you what it looks like when the uh, when the whole thing is closed up. Alright, I've got the two halves closed up and uh, put together. I just have them held on together right now by some tape. Uh, I'm sorry, by some uh, rubber bands. Uh, and they seem to do the trick for the, this purpose. But as you can see, it's a pretty tight fit in there with the uh, Storm OSD and uh, all the current sensor and everything running in there. Uh, nice tight fit. This is a 1000 milliamp LiPo and it just fits in here kind of snug. Actually it fits in here pretty good but um, let me get these out of the way. Sorry I'm trying to hold the camera and the uh, plane at the same time and mess with the plane. So uh, that's the uh, 1000 milliamp LiPo in there. Uh, that's a bad LiPo. I don't fly with it. It took an impact. I just use it for testing purposes and things like that. So um, let me show you a little bit about how I got things set up outside. Um, this is my Spectrum cable uh, extension. And um, I like to run these uh, Spectrum cables uh, as far apart as possible and with different orientation. Um, I've gone over a mile with this setup, uh, so I know that they're they're reliable. Inside the cabin, I have the uh, main antenna. Let's see if I can focus in on that. I have the main antenna with a little bit of heat shrink tubing uh, pointing up, pointing up uh, vertically. So um, what I will do with that then is mount my Spectrum satellite receiver horizontally with the antennas pointing on the um, I believe that's the x-axis so this gives you the most range um, for your uh, spectrum radio like I said I've gone over a mile with this I think it was 1.2 miles um, and uh, I still had good range no fail safes didn't want to push it but uh, it was still still there I've got the little pod right here for my GPS that's gonna be mounted up on here and roll it over to the other side I've got my elevator servo mounted in. Uh, I'll be popping that in place here shortly. And I have the wire running inside. I opted not to use a rudder servo. I uh, just thought that um, you know it would be useless. Flies better as a three channel. 
I, I don't know. So we'll figure that out. Um, my little control board, and I shorten the wires here so I can disconnect it. I don't want to run this in the plane. Any added weight, uh, I think, will definitely um, affect this small little aircraft. But uh, here's my little mini Skywalker FPV setup. Here it is with the wings on. And I'll uh, be running a little immersion 600 milliwatt transmitter right here. And uh, that'll be feeding into my uh, 808 keychain camera. So um, stay tuned. I'll show you the, uh, final, the final product and the uh, made in flight. Hey, this is Johnny with Team Legit, and I'm going to made in my Skywalker today. Here's the finished product. Uh, I got my video transmitter, my keychain camera on here. Uh, I got my power system. I actually moved the power system up a few uh, centimeters just to make sure I can get a 6 4 to clear. I want to make sure I've got enough thrust. I added these carbon booms uh, to stabilize the uh, horizontal stabilizer, and I've got my Spectrum satellite on the uh, tail. Um, I've got my flight stabilizer built in so uh, I'm going to try that out today as well too and uh, stay tuned <laughs> feels like it wants to go down